Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in. My name is Frank and this is my channel Frank Hill Adventures. Today I'm at the Turtle Trail Beach Access here on Florida's famous Treasure Coast, just a little bit south of Abasso, Florida. In a few minutes I'm going to be meeting with the legendary treasure hunter Terry Shannon and we're going to hit this beach and do a little treasure hunting, see if we can't find any remains of the lost fleet of 1715. He'll be here in just a few minutes, so as soon as he gets here, we'll get set up and get started. How you doing, Terry? Pretty good. How good. You, I'm glad you made it. I'm fantastic. I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to the day. I want to thank you for your time and, and uh, getting out here with me. I'm really, really excited. Uh, the legend goes with you. <laughs> Tell me, uh, now I know that this is the Corrigan's wreck site. Yeah, they call And it. I know that the survivor's camp is just a little bit south of us. But beyond them replenishing these beaches every other Tuesday, can you tell me any more about the area? Well, it, it, it's probably the most popular area for treasure hunters that come in. And, you know, there's a lot of, of, of people that are, are down here. But they find this stuff on, on a pretty regular basis down here. I was down here with a friend one time. We went just a little ways north, and he pulled out a couple of reals. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, last year down here, uh, I got into an area with these small musket balls. I dug 210 musket balls and got a small... Uh, uh, Spanish coin, a real. And uh, I was here this year, and this is after the replenishment thing. You know, I was just sick about that replenishment thing. But farther down, they didn't replenish it. And uh, uh, I was gritting the area up, digging a lot of screws, brass screws and stuff like that. And a friend of mine walked up, and just before he got to me, he bent down and picked up the round lid of an olive jar, a Spanish olive jar. Wow. That I did. You know, I found uh, the shards, but I've never got the lid, you know. And uh, I was grid enough. Two more grids and I'd have had that thing. Wow. <laughs> well, all right, buddy. Time's a waste, and it's a beautiful day here on the Treasure Coast, so let's let's hit the beach and get started. Let's do it. All right. There's a buoy out right out the front here. Uh huh. See this buoy, and I thought, boy, that's got to be neat. You know, it's, 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 it's put that buoy up there. Mm -hmm. I talked to one of the divers, and he said he has no idea what that is. Huh? <laughs> so I was going to come out there and take a look, you know, and. and uh... Puppy. <laughs> All right, well, here we are. Going north just a little bit is Wabasso, Florida. And here to the south. Just down by that flagpole and a little further south of that is the survivor's camp, is it not? Yes, it is. Right around the point there. Right? right. Well, a little ways around the point. All right. You'll see. I think we might as well check down there. I think maybe we should do the walk down there. Yeah, let's just hump it down there and then work back. Yeah. All right. Now this, this flagpole in this area is the survivor's camp. How far down or north does that go? I, I didn't realize the survivor camp was this far up. I thought it was around the bend there. That's what my impression is. See, there's another flight pole, or was another flight pole around this point. Okay. You know, and so I believe that's where this at. Uh, okay. And, uh, and right where we're walking now, there's just a long row of sandbags. And when those sandbags are exposed, you know, everybody gets excited and they're down here swinging away. Uh -huh. is, you know, that's, I could be wrong. I don't know everything. Well, I want to agree because I've been down to where the sandbags get exposed. Okay. Right where, where the end of the sandbags get exposed there. You know, if you go probably another 50 yards, that's where I'm getting all those muscle bumps. Okay. Well, that's amazing because I've been right there at low tide when those bags were exposed, hunted all day, and didn't find squat. It's amazing. I know some muscle balls. You know, everybody, there was a bunch of people digging them. Everybody mm -hmm. got a bunch of them. And I even talked to a guy that got three or four cannonballs. Oh, wow. You know, and uh, that was just this year. Oh, okay. But uh, the musket balls were really deep. I never got, you know, a clear signal. It would be just, you know, a little hiccup on the injector, I'd dig it up. And if I got a musket ball, I'd take a couple more scoops. And often, one time I got five of them out of one hole. Wow. But they're just small. I got bigger ones later at the edge of the water. You know, I don't know if they're grape shot or a pistol, but... Well, you can't win if you don't play. Exactly. And it looks like a good day to do it. Like I said, my friend, I'm excited. 
I'm excited and I'm honored. So maybe we'll get lucky and we'll make news. Every, every uh, good find ever found is a total surprise. <laughs> there you go. Well, all right, we'll hump it down here until you say stop and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, you see where that bait comes in right there. Uh huh, okay. Because I was napped before that. Okay. That might be a good area. That look that bad, all right, well, that's what we'll do then because you can see where the sand stops. All right. Okay, so we've made it down to the second flagpole. So you're saying that this is what you recollect is the actual survivor's camp? I believe it is. That's, that's what I've been told. Uh, and this is the area where I found all the musket balls and I found the, the Spanish going. You know, so this has been a hot area from here on down. You know, uh, and well, that cut, I'm looking at that cut right around there after the sand. I hate to tell you this, but I'm kind of excited. I think we can do something. Look at the cut here. It's, yeah, I see that. See, the problem with these types of cut here is it's, it's cut to new replacements. Right. And it's brought that sand out here to cover the right. stuff. Right. I've told people that before. You know, normally you'd want to be right up against that, but people don't seem to realize a lot that that's fresh dirt. There's nothing there. Yeah. So all you're doing is, is hunting the edge of nothing. It's not till we get down there where the sand stops that we're going to be getting into the goodies. Well, all right. Everything looked different. You know, there was an area right in here that, you know, there was a lot of frequency. Of, you know, uh, it would uh, screw up your detector. And you got just past that. Mm -hmm. you that very staircase. And that's from there, about 100 yards down this week. That's all the muscle right there. Excellent. And I run into a guy here this spring, and uh, he'd never detected the treasure coast. And it was all washed out pretty good, Dad. You find this yet. And I said, here's where the musket ball is. I said, what's this area? And he got one. And uh, we were at a hunt and he was over there and he came over and thanked me. He said, you know, that you know that was a dream to find something. And he did. You know, and that's kind of neat, you know. It's I, I like I said, I sold the farm and moved here just to do this. Yep. I, I this is it. To me, this is paradise on earth. You know, people don't realize it, but Indian River County is absolutely undiscovered country. We're, we're uh, walking over treasure right now. Oh, absolutely. Anywhere you stand out here, you're probably not more than 50 feet from a relic or a coin. I, I agree. I agree. You know, unfortunately, a lot of it is straight down. <laughs> straight down. It wasn't 50 feet, but... Uh, right up by the inlet, I found an anchor shackle probably about as big as my detector head. It's not that old. It's probably, you know, late 1800s or something, but Still, it's, an it's a cool thing. And it was about 18 or 19 inches down. I found it with my Sea Hunter Mark II. Up in a, up on like an edge of a, like this, but it wasn't replenished. I, I, I bought this here. Up, I was up north uh, detecting and I got into an area and it was about mid beach and it just loaded with coins. And I hit her all day. I had to leave early at 3 o'clock because we're going out to uh, supper. And I go back the next day, and, and the tide was going, you know, the, the moon, the full moon was over, and it, the tide is receding more every day, see. So I had about a week window to detect that. Area. And I got two uh, Carlos and Iwana Spanish Real. Wow. The one, you can date the one by the assayer on here, mm -hmm. 1544. Wow. To my knowledge, right now, I think that's the oldest coin ever found on the treasure. Cool. And I went back the third day, and got some more stuff. And then I bought that Sea Hunter because it was too late by the time I got the Sea Hunter. But when you hit an area like that, really rich in targets, you know, after you clean it out, it'd be nice to go in with a pulse machine because there's got to be stuff a little bit deep. Got to be deep. And I bought the big coil for it, the great big one. Now the I great big one. It's, it, it's great for you, you, trying to use it in the water to be useless because it's huge. But on land like this, it's really great. You put fresh batteries in that sucker and put that big coil on it, it's the deepest machine I've, I've ever seen. I, I got the regular coil, I got the big one. And I borrowed it out to a guy up in Minnesota and I didn't get the small coil back. Oh. It's just he doesn't have it. And, uh, and he may not, you know, he's a good guy. Yeah. But I have, you know, oh, well. the big coil. With me, yeah. I can't swing it. it yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of heavy. Well, now I got the little bag too. The little, the little pouch that it mounts on your belt. Yeah, and let me tell you what, that takes a great deal of weight off your arm. Yeah. 
Well, I've got I've got one of these swinging things. You know? mm -hmm. And I've had like five surgeries on my arm. So. Ooh. Well, three on one and two on the other. Well, that cut doesn't look as good as it did down there. It don't, yeah, but it's it's better than. Well, you know what? I want to tell you what, Terry. Here we are. Here we are. We have nothing but today. It, uh, I was playing cards with some people one time and, and, uh, down here, and they were snowbirds like myself. And they said, you know, he was telling me the percentage of people it was like one or two percent that can do what we do. You know, it, it, uh, you know, a lot of us by choice, they don't have an adventure so whole bit of what we're doing is exciting. It's exciting. I love it. You like I said, I... That artifact and you got it in your hand. You know, you're the first person to touch it for at least 300 years. Well, I sold my retirement for this, buddy. So this is where it's got to happen. Okay, so here we are. The flagpole we passed is just a little bit to the south, to the north of us now, actually. So we're going to work south from here. Yeah, I work south of this. See where them two people are? Right. Yeah, that there's another bay called John's Island. I just think we can work from here down there and work back. And All right. Hope for some luck. All right. So we're going to get started, and I'll get back to you on the first target. Well, it's coming up on my machine like brass or aluminum, so I don't know. Right in there. Got another ghost target, buddy. What's that? A ghost target. I dug it. And now it's disappeared. Hit it with yours and see if you can get, get a ping on that. This is the remains of a party long ago. A little piece of beer can. Somebody uh, melted in a fire. Oh well. We'll keep looking. How you doing? He was a guy that goes through my books and tracks all his coming. Nice How you doing? Good, Good to meet you. Good Frank you. Hill. So he, uh, Proofreader, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he spends weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know they got spell check on your computer now. I know that. <laughs> I have to do the same thing. I write late at night, done had a few drinks, man. I'll wake up the next day and it's like, oh my God. It's great today, huh? I uh, got the ebook. I saw that. Yeah. I didn't know you were having trouble. I know. Did you have more trouble than when you found the ebook? Oh yeah. Well, let me see what, what happened. When, when, you know, I, I, we got it down to a PDF, right. and it wouldn't make a PDF. Uh, and it gave me a picture. And so Dave, you know, a JPEG is a picture. Well, it said it had to be a JPEG. So Just Dave, the cover. Yeah, just you know, the book I got that downloaded right on it. That one, that one really was really once we got it in the PDF, and then uh, it had to be the picture had to be a JPEG. Right. And then I'm downloading it up, and it comes said that you had to have uh, color. It had to be. Uh, Terry, next time call me over your house. Seriously, it took three days. 
<laughs> I, get a, I get embarrassed calling you. No, 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 we must have just do it and get it done. We must have spent three days. Well, I didn't spend three whole days. I, I worked on it until I got mad. I mean, well. At the time, if you want to get mad, we're getting shorter and shorter. Yeah. <laughs> just yep. call me next time. Because I didn't, I thought we were all done. I go, oh, okay. Perfect. I didn't know that. And I read your email. I go, oh, yeah. Um, call me next time. Color space. Yeah, color space. It had to be, uh, Green, red, and blue. Yeah, just call me. RGB, yeah. Green, red, blue. Yeah, and RGB. And of course, and I didn't know what that meant. So I went over to Dave, I said, you know what that means? Oh, yeah. It's a different kind of car. Yeah. You know how to roll? It's kind of a kind of place. You went right past that bowl there. Huh? There's a little bowl there. Yeah. You went past it. You know, this is just flat, by the way. Yeah, all the way to do it. We're almost there. I was actually thinking I had more. Actually, going up to the See, before you take off and get, like, if you take a picture of me and Frank, I'm going to get one of these. All right, just dug for a couple minutes and came up with a little another piece of iron. Pretty cool looking piece, though. No telling what it was, but it's still cool. We'll keep going. Well, we've been at it for a few minutes now almost back to the second flagpole so far between me and terry all we found is that little piece of aluminum and a little shipwreck iron fragment but if it's going to happen it's going to happen here so we're going to stay at it i'll try to get back to you on the next target Off a big signal for six of four. Anybody's guess? Hmm. Well, it's round, it's not square, but yeah, right. it's still a thing and it's still pretty cool. <laughs> Very nice. It sure is if you want it. <laughs> all righty then. But that's what it's all about. It looks like it's been out there for a day or two. Yep. It's still paying itself still with it. I'm usually in the water. I think it helps. All right. I like that scoop. On to the next. That's the extreme, right? Well, we're done. Been out here for a couple hours humping it pretty hard. This is a total sum of our finds between me and Terry. We got a couple of pieces of probably melted beer cans, three little pieces of what I like to call shipwreck iron, and this one spike fragment. Don't know how old it is, but it's pretty cool. And that was it. But it was a good hunt, and I don't think we could have done better. Terry, like I said, my friend, I really appreciate the opportunity. I had a blast, man. I had an absolute blast, and... Like, like you said, I'm walking away with a new friend. Well, and I am too, and I'm really grateful, and, and maybe when you get back, we can do it again. No, no for sure. No All right, pressure. we'll do it. We'll do it. Like I said, I'm, I'm good to go anytime. But I had a blast, so maybe even though I'll we didn't... Let me give you my card. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's great. I really appreciate that. Well, we did it. Like I said, I'm grateful. Didn't have to find nothing, but I did. I mean, that's the stuff, man. Yeah. That's the stuff. That's what we came here for. Well, if you like Terry Shannon, you can make a hell of a story out of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate the book, too. Sure. I'll, uh, when I get back, I'll send you an email, and we'll see what the future brings. Had, had a book. They had a picture of the... Whistle. Uh, from the 
ship. Anyway, that's what I inspired him to come over here. He oh. said he'd like to find that book. I said, I think I got it. Mm. And if I have, I'm yeah, I was, I was about, I was in the seventh grade. Uh, we lived out at Nellis in Las Vegas. And I had an uncle in Fort Lauderdale, and I'd always, I was born in Florida and always wanted to come back. And I found that book, and th that, that's what I'm going to do someday. It took me 50 years, but I, by God, made it. Yeah. Well, I, I the made it. Same thing with, with the McLarty <laughs> Museum. I wanted to get into that scrapbook, and, and that was my, my goal. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. I, uh, um, the book that Jeff has, I found one in Canada. Did I tell you that? Oh, did. He paid twelve dollars for this book, and I, it was one hundred and fifty everywhere. It was, a, it was an old book written by. Yeah, I, I went home. I, I got the book. Well, I found it in Canada, but I, it's supposed to be delivered at my house up north. So, I, as a matter of fact, I actually checked. I don't know where it is. What, but, what did you have to pay for it then? Uh, with, in Canada, it was twelve dollars Canadian, so like ten bucks. Oh, okay. And that's but, including shipping. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I had it. You know, and, and it's so, a good book. Yeah, really good book. I do a lot of reading. You know, I spend a lot of time on the job, and that's what I do. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> Although my wife walks all the time, and she goes, you know, and I'm constantly sitting on John with the door, and here she comes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. I'm head out, I'm hot. Yeah, I hear that. Turned okay, out well, to be a beautiful day. Yes, thing, please, thank please, you. please do. Appreciate it, buddy. Yep. All Great right. Rest you, Terry, we'll see you later, man. You be safe, and you take care, and if I don't see you till you get back, you, uh, you have a safe trip. Yeah, well, you'll keep, you know, I'll get you on my email list. Yep, oh, yeah. When I get home, I'm going to get re-coordinated, and I'll shoot you an email, and Look forward to seeing you again. You take care, buddy. Thanks, Frank. Thank you.